Hello fellow roadies, I'm Dan and in this video Kevin and I are going to share with you some of the top 10 things that we've seen over the, the past year that have either broken rules, laws, or just poor camper etiquette. So stick around and see what our list is. Maybe you can come up with some of your own. Woo. Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Kevin from Compass Roads. Dan's back at the house with Ava. Uh, he's washing the smoker. We just went ahead and smoked some, uh, some meats in our little portable master built. Uh, I'll link the video somewhere in here when this gets released. So I'm coming back for a part two of etiquette in, in parks or just camping in general. And I'm gonna have my phone out, just give you all <laughs> a little bit of heads up so I can actually look at my notes. So more etiquette. Oh, the fall is awesome here at Horseshoe Bend. I love it. The lake is over there behind me, but I'm going to have to kind of do this quick because I don't have much, much battery life. But anyways, some of the no-nos and things that are frowned upon in the park. Number one, first and foremost, speeding. Uh, there's posted, for the most part, there's posted uh, speed limits in the park, and they can range from 5, 10, I've seen in places or here in this Corps of Engineer Park, it's 20 miles per hour. Uh, so don't speed. Be courteous of other people and their family members like kids who don't not don't always look in between cars, especially when it's a packed campground. So don't speed. Two, which <clears throat> we have not seen, but we've seen videos of this, dumping your tanks uh, on the ground other than fresh water we are known that when like for the instance here we filled up our fresh tank yesterday and when we leave this friday i know that we are not excuse me i know that we're not going to use all our fresh water that's in our tank so guess what we're going to dump our fresh tank it's fresh water uh lessens the weight when we have to drive three hours so why not <clears throat> but with that being said gray tanks unless it's already been approved because some areas do approve of gray tank dumping uh, we still don't do it. Never should black tanks be dumped in the park. That's nasty. There's health issues that can arise from that. You, it's just nasty. That's a, I'm sorry, that's a low caliber of a human being that does that. Take your stuff. There's always dump stations around. Go dump your tanks in the right place. Don't just dump them on the ground. Ugh, this one we have seen and it is so nasty. So when you're packing up and you're leaving your camping spot, your campsite, do not use the freshwater spigot at your site to rent your dirty, stinky slinky. That is absolutely nasty because other people got to use it and they don't want to have to filter out your crap. Just going to be blunt. That's nasty. You should have a separate hose and you should be doing that up at the dump station and use what's provided there. You should not ever use that. That was number three. <laughs> number four goes in line with this after you rinse your stuff or even before which we've always uh, we've seen as well do not put your dirty sewage hoses on the picnic tables if your site has a picnic table provided for you other people got to use that that is so nasty Ugh. i don't know why people do that but it happens quite a lot a bit and we've seen it a lot just in our short time being on the road less than two years that was number four number five if you watched the previous one, which we're going to link in here about my five etiquette rules, and I had a bonus tip in there. Don't cut through people's campgrounds. All right, that's cool for adults not to do that, but you need to teach your children as well. That's bad camping etiquette, and we don't know your children. And don't get mad when somebody yells at your kid because they're cutting through the campground. Kids like to have sticky fingers sometimes. And when I say kids, I'm not just talking about little toddlers five or six years old. I'm talking about teenagers. They shouldn't be cutting through anybody's campsite. You, as a parent or guardian of said child, needs to teach them correctly. This one is a big no-no. Not putting your fires out before you leave. I've seen this habitually. And here in this campground about a week ago was when we first came in. Not only did they not put their fire out, it was still smoldering. They left and it caught fire again. Luckily it stayed in the ring and we monitored it. I wasn't gonna go over there and put it out, but obviously I would if it was gonna to get too big. But we watched it and it went, it put itself out eventually, but <clears throat> thank God we were there to watch it and monitor it. Number seven, 
leaving trash in the fire rings and in the campsite. This happened to us over at Prairie Creek right before we went to Michigan. We had two campsites reserved. We stayed in one campsite for five days and we had to move because uh, we couldn't get the full seven and we had to stay here a week before we can get to our next campground. So we moved to the next spot <laughs> and there was trash everywhere. This was a fellow Texan that was in there too. They had left, they had small children. They didn't walk their campsite. I always walk our campsite after we pull out. I always stay behind. I walked the campsite just to make sure <clears throat> they had two vehicles. I think that they could have done it as well. They just chose not to. Uh, Everybody, you know, when it's time to get on the road, you want to get on the road, but you still got to do what's expected of you and clean up after yourself. Number eight on our checklist is shower room and bathroom etiquette. Now, there's a lot of signage that's on there, usually no smoking and no dogs allowed. And one of my pet peeves is people that are smoking inside the restroom now that it's getting cold. Uh, you don't need to smell that if you happen to be in there. And also, they happen to leave their butts anywhere because there are no ashtrays in the restrooms. I've even seen them in the showers. It's just nasty habit. Also, if you've got a non-service dog, don't take them in there if it's posted, no animals allowed, because a few weeks ago we saw somebody washing a non-service dog in the shower and they left the shower a mess they left footprints of muddy footprints all over the bathroom and left that mess for somebody else like the park attendant to clean up not cool not cool at all this is number nine right yeah this is number nine i touched on this one in my last video god it's beautiful out there check that out i'm gonna turn this around real quick so you can see look at that Let's walk over there a little bit. We're actually in a campsite or in a campground where this spot, they closed it down after October 31st, but you can still walk over here and whatnot. And this is just part of Horseshoe Bend. It's really pretty out here. This site's pretty cool. They don't have water here. Like most Corps of Engineers, they don't have sewer, but on this one, they don't have uh, water on this side either. But I don't, it wasn't even open when we were here last, uh, before October 31st. And I think it's because it flooded and they got a bunch of driftwood all over the road right here and they still need to clean it up. I don't know why they haven't cleaned up, it's been months. But anyways, back to this. Number nine, aggressive dogs. Not dog breeds or what people consider dog breeds because I've seen plenty of pit bulls that are lovable and that's all they want to do. They're deemed an aggressive dog breed like Rottweilers and Dobermans and all kinds of other stuff, but normally what I see are it's the little ones, it's the little dogs. Um, they're not, like their owners don't even put them on the leash. Uh, and that's fine if you're gonna do that, I guess. But if you know your dog is, has a, a tendency to bum rush other dogs, then guess what? You probably should have them on the leash when you're walking them. And that includes the people can't post because what I'm seeing lately is there's a couple camp hosts that actually feel like they're above the laws that their campground has and they don't, they won't leash their dogs. Now their dogs follow them, but it doesn't say that in there. Rules are rules and you can't really go enforce them if you're breaking them, right? So definitely if you're a camp host, follow that rule. And if your dog is aggressive, <laughs> chances are it shouldn't be in public. I'm just gonna leave it out there. And nine times out of 10 in our, in our occurrences or what we deal with, it's usually the smaller dogs. The smaller dogs are usually the ones that are little, or the little, or the ones that are more aggressive and have a tendency to, our dog doesn't bark really. She does when she plays, but other than that, and it's usually the little dogs that are trying to take her face off and she's just looking at them like, what's going on? Why are you being so mean? Number 10 on our list pertains to permanent or annual site owners at a particular campground. Now we understand they pay a pre premium price to actually own or lease a site, but sometimes they feel that they are above the campground rules because they are residents of that particular campground. However, they want to go ahead and make sure that all the transients that are there obey the campground rules and not necessarily follow their residential rules. So we as transients don't mind following the rules as long as everybody else in the campground is following the same set of rules. And that's basically what we're asking for. But here's my bonus one, number 11. Last night, and I don't know if this is like some parks that some people have, you know, they have the, the check-in little gate. Well, here at Horseshoe Bend, there's nobody up there. There's nobody running that gate. 
So, and they don't close that gate, rightfully so, it's at night. So we had some people come in behind us last night and stay in a spot that's barricaded off because just like this spot over here, it's barricaded. Meaning you can't camp there. <laughs> you can walk there. They allow people because over at the front they park and they walk down and they fish from there for day use and then they go back uh, and that's fine. But these people actually went around a barrier, set up their tent. There was three cars, three cars there, set up their tent camp there i woke up this morning about 6 30 took ava out they were starting to wake up within 30 minutes they were gone so what do you think they were doing to me it looked like they were trying to avoid to pay what is already what i think is just a low camping rating where the squirrels are over there playing <laughs> or whatever they do maybe they're chasing each other fighting i don't know but anyways they came in and then they were gone so to me i'm like that's just that's classless very not classy at all. That uh, shows who you are. There may be some other issues going on why they had to camp over there. I don't know that, but to say that, that we were full, we wasn't. We wasn't even close to being full. I bet we were not even a quarter away full for the campground, the side that we're in. So there was really no need for them to be over there other than they just didn't want to be around other campers. They didn't want to be around other campers or they were trying to just get in and get out because they're traveling and they didn't want to have to pay. So to me, I thought that was kind of low budget. Okay, I just wanted to sneak back in here because Kevin was able to put in a little bonus himself. I want to add my own bonus. And that happens to be, now this is really not breaking a rule. It may not break even etiquette, but just something for campers that have bright lights on their trailers or on the rigs to keep in mind, depending on how they're facing. So. There are a lot of um, rigs out there that have these LED lights either in their cap or in their awnings and they're very bright and people like to leave them on all night long. If you're not facing anybody, that's great, but be aware of the people that are camped around you and make sure that it's not going to infringe on them being able to sleep because maybe not everybody has the full blackout shades that you may have in your camper. Just a consideration. But anyways, there you have it. Such a beautiful day at the lake, even though it is overcasty and it's starting to sprinkle now. One of my favorite spots, and we didn't really camp here until this year. We've never camped up this far in Northwest Arkansas, even though this is where I'm from. But that's it. That's it in a nutshell. If you like the content that we're providing, do us a favor, go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit that like button because it really does help out the channel. Leave a comment. If you think I'm way off base on any of the stuff that I'm talking about, please leave a comment below. Leave a thumbs down if you want. If you don't like the content, I don't care. It's not gonna stop me from making videos. I'm still gonna do it. It's what I like. It's what I like to do. Uh, so, and hit the subscribe button if you want. We'll see you all later. Okay, so that does it for our top 10 plus two bonuses of etiquette failures, let's call them, um, that we have experienced in the last year. Maybe you have actually noticed some failures yourself. If you have, please note them in the comments below. I'm sure your other fellow campers would love to see or hear them as well. And maybe spark some interest and say, hey, I never really thought of that, but I could be a more considerate camper if I just did this. So if that's it, Go ahead, uh, leave a comment down below. Maybe you didn't like some of the comments that we had. Well, go ahead, put that down there anyways, and maybe give you a reason as well. So until next time, until the next video, where will the road take you? Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights